International Conference on Water Reclamation and Reuse has kicked off today in Cape Town. The five-day gathering will then bring together the world's leading experts together with private sector and government to share the latest advancements in science, technology, as well as best practices in the areas of water reuse and recycling. Now this, as countries around the world are grappling with difficulties of providing water for their growing urban populations and water reuse is increasingly at the forefront of realistic alternatives to rapidly uh, to the rapidly diminishing supplies uh, from existing water resources. And to take this discussion further, let's now welcome uh, Jay Bagwan, uh, the International Water Association Conference Chair. Jay, a very good afternoon. Good to have you with us today. Welcome to SA Today. First, talk uh, to us about the significance of this conference uh, for South Africa in particular and our future water security as the country is currently grappling a myriad of water shortages due to many reasons from climate change to lack of adequate resources as well as infrastructure just among many. Alicia, thank you for having me talking from Cape Town, uh, from the venue. Uh, I think the, you know, the timing and uh, the event is quite opportunistic. I mean, if you look at our own trajectory in South Africa, uh, you know, we predict that by 2030, uh, we will be struggling to meet the demands for water in this country. And when I talk about demands, it's the economic demands as well as the growth in the population. So, 30, you know, 2030 is not very far away for us. And, uh, you know, we need to start thinking where the next drop of water is going to come from. Now, as a country, you know, we recognize as being amongst the 20th driest countries in the world. And we've kind of worked the system to capture and, and, and allocate and use all our surface water resources. So we've been kind of uh, developing dams and transfer schemes, etc., to ensure that from a security perspective, uh, you know, we can tap the last drop that is running uh, on the surface. But we're reaching the limits of that. And that's why by 2030, we need to start working out a plan where the next drop is going to come from. Now, water reuse has never been seen you know, kind of uh, uh, as sexy and, and useful, etc. It's got the yuckiness. You know, people kind of are very reserved that uh, you flush the water, you, you know, you bath with the water, and now you're asking me to reuse it. But that's going to be our future security. It's mm. the low-hanging fruit. Uh, it's the easiest opportunity, and it's the most cost-effective opportunity. Mm. You know, because we're not going to flush it and throw it away. We need to start using it where it is being generated. Absolutely. So that is why, not only for us, sorry. Yes, Jay, go ahead. I say not in, not. Yeah, not only for us, but many cities in the world, many metros in the world are reaching those limits. So we are now starting to put water reuse, you know, at a very high priority as an opportunity in what we call the water mix from a resource. We don't see uh, wastewater anymore as a waste. We see it as a resource and we're saying how can we now use this resource more effectively and more efficiently to build that water security pathway? Mm, and Jay, I mean, if you're talking about 2030, that is literally about a couple of years time from now on. So we don't have uh, the, 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 you know, the reassurance of time on our side uh, to actually be sitting around and not doing anything about this. So we need to get on with overcoming these barriers on the reuse of water. So let's talk about some perceptions then, Jay, uh, regarding recycled water and how do we then work towards changing uh, those perceptions? Often people associate this type of water, as you alluded to earlier on, as of lesser quality. And uh, of, obviously, the conference will be looking to address uh, the, these concerns. But how exactly uh, will you be selling this narrative uh, to those in attendance? It's a very clearly technology 
innovation and very strict regulation and enforcement uh, you know play a very very big part in building assurance amongst users in the world you know it's it's uh, you know the the, the big uh, kind of issues people have is uh, the uncertainty of whether it's going to be clean enough etc uh, whether it would have health effects or it's going to smell so there is that kind of uh, behavioral element at the moment but as soon as people start uh, uh, you know uh, acquiring information and knowledge and see the trajectory around how innovation and technology is improving i mean we have now advanced so far that we can give greater assurances uh, to the public to the users that uh, the, the processes we have the barriers that we put in uh, you know we can now uh, treat and and deliver water of a very high potable quality uh, you know even higher than some of the stuff we are drinking now but so I mean, this is the reality uh, this is the sorry Yes, go ahead. Yes, so th this is the kind of reality and this is the narrative uh, we need to start bringing and these conferences uh, and putting these minds together start uh, you know that uh, direction of building this assurance in the public that it is being addressed uh, the science and the knowledge uh, is being advanced to ensure that we get there very quickly and that you know once we get there uh, the behavior starts changing Absolutely, because uh, un un unaware to some people, Jay, indirect water reuse has actually been the global strategy uh, for many decades now in, in managing the security of uh, this vital resource as well. So let's talk innovation as well as new technologies uh, that appear to be at the, the forefront on advancing future water security. What capacities then does uh, or has South Africa shown uh, in this regard? We are often told that the country is still lacking uh, behind from futuristic diagnostic technology to prevent any negative impact on users? Well, you know, it's just to be fortunate that, you know, we uh, as a country uh, planted the seeds uh, of uh, innovation for, for water reuse some 40 years ago. I mean, we uh, were in the forefront. We continue to be in the forefront. So, uh, you know, we've kind of pioneered a lot of the first direct reuse systems. Uh, Vinduk used to be our laboratory. And today, Vinduk, for the last 20 odd years, 30 odd years, they're providing potable water from treated effluent, uh, you know, and they're using 80% of all the water that is, uh, you know, being generated, uh, you know, from, from uh, 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 you know, the first use, flushing, et cetera, bathing. So they've been demonstrating and they've built together with many people the technology and moved the technology forward to build many, many barriers to ensure that we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, produce this water of high quality. Now, the advancements are coming from uh, the advancement in membranes uh, which are central to uh, water treatment nowadays and especially when you're dealing with very complex uh, waste wastewater streams and you want to remove so the membranes used to have a constraint in the sense that they required a lot of energy to 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 run these systems today with the advancements the ceramic ceramic membranes etc we're starting to see much more efficient uh, low pressure uh, low fouling membranes, etc., that are bringing the operational cost down and making this a reality. But together with that, we've also opened up the pathway around what we call nature-based solutions, using constructed wetlands, using you know how nature uh, treats uh, very complex uh, polluted wastewater and makes it clean. And we are marrying these technologies, uh, you know, in 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 a in a way that offers us this opportunity to leapfrog this innovation into application. The issues of desalination, very quickly, Jay, I mean, how far are we in terms of uh, actually uh, going this route or recognizing this route as uh, one that will ensure uh, future water security? 
Yeah, so, you know, desalination, uh, you know, uses the similar technology platforms, but again, because you're dealing with very, very salty water, etc., removing the salt require a multi-layered uh, process and a lot of energy. But, you know, it's a matter of time that, uh, you know, when, when we are in this trajectory and we need to replenish the water resource, uh, you know, water reuse, desalination from a cost perspective might become more compatible or more attractive to finding the next source of fresh water. And, and the next source of fresh water might mean for us to go, you know, thousands of kilometers away to transfer that. And that's going to come at a very huge cost. So we're starting to see that in certain circumstances where there's constraints, where there's challenges, uh, water reuse and desalination might become the preferred options. Okay, Jay, thank you so much uh, for your input this afternoon. Best of luck with the conference. Uh, that is Mr. Jay Bagwan, the IWA conference chair on the International Conference on Water, taking place over the next five days in Cape Town.